That's it. They'll be finished now. There were distances of even 50 to 100 meters between us and Russians. I always enter the position first and leave last. In this episode, the commander of the assault group, with the call sign Joker, will talk about his combat experience, as well as comment on some of the toughest battles with his participation. This is what a soldier looks like when he comes back from the positions. Friend, how long were you at the position? Three days. Look, he is completely covered with mud, from head to toe. His uniform, ammunition, backpack, only the weapon is clean, the barrel is clean, and he is covered in mud. That's how the infantry looks like. You went through literally dozens of combat operations with your brigade in the infantry. Yes, near Bakhmut, near Azaria Nifka. By the way, it was my first battle there in the infantry. We took up positions there and held the defense. The first week was just hell. They were trying to level us to the ground with everything. Aircrafts, helicopters, tanks, artillery. I don't know what they haven't shielded us with. But we resisted and survived. Grenade! Let me through. Shot! Come on, bastards. We fought back. The village of Azarianivka near Bakhmut, there was so-called pool there. Very fierce battles were fought for this area, where infantry could gain a foothold and dig fortifications for months on end. There were battles there for more than a year for that pool. We drove the enemy out of there. Then the Russians attacked us and drove us out. Then we went back there again. A lot of people died in that pool. Last time we went there, everything was dotted with 200s. I said, let's go. Whatever happens, happens. I thought that if I was destined to die there, then I was destined to die. You know, when I went to the war, I thought I'd be killed right away. But it didn't happen. I was lucky enough to live so long. Ukrainian artillery begins to strike at enemy positions. In this footage, you can see the positions of the Russians. We can also see the work of one of the Ukrainian scouts who came close to the enemy. He and the drone in the sky are adjusting the work of the assault group and artillery. There were distances of even 50 to 100 meters between us and the Russians.
We're going that way. Kiss, we have two lightly wounded. Daring and Hacker. Minor injuries, over. Roger that. Stretch forward. Come on, let's get out of here. Hacker, bro, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. You run next. Plus. I'm afraid, brother. Good luck, bro. Sit down. Hurry up. Let's go. Yeah. Come on, come on. Hacker! Crawl over here, please. Come on. I got you, bro. How are you doing? Are you okay? That's great. Damn it. Cover. Cover the hacker, please. I'm the last one. Pipe. No, don't go. Stop. You don't know what's out there. Take the trench. Are you okay, hacker? Yeah, I'm fine. Guys, we need to move forward. How do you motivate the people next to you to go on assaults and to carry out missions and do their service in such difficult conditions, in the cold, in the mud, day after day? What do you tell them? I lead by example. If I'm going, you should go. I remind them why and for whom they're doing this. And I promise some of them a vacation after the assault. He's inside. Grenade. What? Thor grenaded him. His. We reached the dugout. There's an enemy inside. Do you copy? There's someone moving. It was an orc shooting. Copy that? Roger that. Plus. Guys, we are totally getting a vacation for this. Control, two. Do not get close to the dugout yet. Yes, there are already two of our fighters at the entrance. Guys, dismantle the barricade and come out. We won't shoot if you come out unarmed. Shit, what's that for? Shooting, you bastard. Just raise your hands and surrender. Your name? We are moving near a forest bell. Caution, move carefully. There were shots in the forest belt opposite us. We heard them. Over. Roger. We heard. That's what delayed us. Over. Where are you from? From the far east. Are we going to make a deal or not? No, goodbye. That's it. They'll be finished now. Ow. 
hours. Shot. How are you guys? Everything is 450. The situation is under control. That's good. There was a shrapnel hit here in the plate, and the plate survived, thank God. I think that if it wasn't for this vest, I wouldn't be talking to you. Also, there was another hit here, also in the body armor. It pierced through, but the plate held back the shrapnel. There were also small shrapnel hits to the helmet. Here, here, and here too. Although they are small, they could pierce the skull. Then we moved over here, came in and stood in position here. We had a rotation every five days. My group was supposed to enter the positions in the evening, but the Russians stormed the position and drove our men out. Then one of our groups tried to break through, and then another, but they failed. The commander asked me if we were going to storm it. I said yes, although I had my opportunity to refuse. I and my group would not have gone, but I could not refuse because my good friend, you could say my brother, was there. But I would not have refused anyway. We went in the evening. It was about five o'clock. It was already getting dark and snowing. How did you get there? How did you manage to break through? Look, I don't, I don't work by the book. I always go first. According to the book, the commander should go third, but I always go first. I believe that if I'm a commander, I have to go first, and then my men will never give up. I always enter the position first and leave last, so that my soldiers follow me. And they always do. There were four of us, because I didn't see the point of taking any more people into this operation. We reached the designated point and split into two groups. One group walked about 30 meters behind, and my group went ahead. I told my guys that we had to jump into the enemy trenches. If we get within 30 meters of the trenches, there will be no turning back. Even if we're discovered and fired upon, we still had to run there and jump in. We reached the first trenches. I jumped in, then my partner jumped in. Jump in. Jump in. Get in. He became number one. I became number two, covering him. The second group, meanwhile, saw that we had entered the trenches, and while we were covering them, they went around to the trenches from the other side so that we could then attack from two sides. Our plan was that we would clear certain enemy trenches, and they would come in from the other side and clear the other trenches and holes. Hurry up. The assault began. While my partner reloads, I cover him. Let me. Hurry up. Move. Everything was thought out step by step. We go in, he shoots, and I throw a grenade. In the first grenade, which was still Soviet, I tore off the fuse, but the wire remained there. Damn it! 
Such delays can sometimes cost lives. Grenade! Moving forward, I'm coming to you. Plus, have you been there? Jump over there. Friend, how many enemy soldiers did you personally destroy in this battle? I never say that I personally destroyed them. Go and throw a grenade into the one at the far end. Plus, we have passed the first trench. We are moving on. Go back a couple steps. Ours. And you know, they say the position was taken by the Joker. No, not the Joker, but the Joker's group did. What is it? Move. Get back. Get down. We've already thrown two grenades in there. So, let's move on. He's finished. Move forward. Therefore, we all went in together and we destroyed seven enemies. Stormy, Stormy, I'm the Joker, over. Enemy trenches cleared. Roger that. We eliminated six of them at once. And the seventh, we were waiting for him. When we cleared the trenches, we immediately started looking for an enemy radio. And we found it, and I listened to their radio. They were trying to contact this position. Of course, we did not answer. I don't remember their call sign, but they called the position the fourth. Judging by the interception, we realized that the Russian commander thought that the batteries on the radio were dead at this position. So he sent a soldier to bring the batteries there. One of them has gone. We are waiting. We waited for about two hours. Then we saw him coming through the thermal imager. We opened fire and eliminated him. Then the enemy realized that the position was already ours. And they started firing at us with drones, AGS, and artillery. I immediately put two soldiers on observation post at the edge of the trenches to watch for the enemy. My partner and I started clearing the shelters and digging trenches to prepare a position for another group to replace us. The second group came and also started digging shelters. Digging, digging, and digging again. If you want to survive the war, you need to dig trenches all the time. I don't think I'm killing anyone. I'm just destroying our enemy. I don't want to make a military career. I'm at war, as long as there is a war. I am here until death or victory. That's it. If you were interested in today's episode and would like me to continue doing episodes like this next, then let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment. You can support the author by the details in the description. Thank you.